on Youth ESO. And we are live. Welcome everyone to the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind Friday call. On behalf of Dave Savage with Mortgage Coach, I'm Todd Bookspan with Win by Noon, and I'm joined here live in San Diego at Sales Mastery with none other than Bliss Sawyer, super member of our group. Welcome, Bliss. Welcome, everybody. So glad to be here in San Diego with Todd. It's been super to get to know him, and we've kind of known each other throughout the years, but we've been able to have a few conversations over the last day or two, and it's been awesome. You know, it has been fun, and I'm really grateful that Bliss is here, as we were going to be joined by Jen Duplissis. Uh, say a little prayer for her and her neck of the woods. The hurricane knocked out all of their power and everything. So she is unable to jump on this morning with us live. I have uh, a little prayer for everybody over there because that kills so many things in industries and affects everybody. So prayers out to everybody on the East Coast that's being affected. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of fun. So I'm expecting today that many of you in the group will actually ask us questions because ultimately in the end, that's sort of what this is about. Listen, and I figured we'd spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, what we've heard here, what we've observed here, kind of what's going on at Sales Mastery. I do want to remind you guys before I forget that on Tuesday, there's going to be like an all-star lineup of folks on with Dave um, talking about the seller buy-down and Dave's new seller buy-down playbook. So if you don't have the Tuesday call on your calendar, it's got some crazy folks like Lori Richardson, John Downs, Scott Nicholson. I saw the list. There's like five or six like superstar loan officers on there all at one time. So you're going to want to jump on and be there. Certainly if there's any of you on here are using seller buy down and want to jump on today and talk to us about it, that would be great. If any of you really are crazy enough and you left the meeting live at sales mastery, hopefully you're not streaming it live from inside of the conference room. However, if you walked out and you've got some takeaways, we'd love to hear those as well. And it's kind of fun. I'm getting ready to launch a podcast in two weeks and I actually spent I don't know, almost two hours with you and with your team interviewing yesterday. So I feel like I already know everything about Bliss. (laughs) And then I'm going to struggle to ask her good questions based on the fact that we discussed it all yesterday. That said, you said you had a couple of great takeaways that you thought were super implementable right from the get-go. Yeah, we've actually started to implement on super simple things. And so uh, one of them is, and I think it was Todd, and it was on the first day that mentioned this, um collecting so well how i've instructed my team is that once a month we're going to take the testimonials that have come in we do try hard to get testimonials from our past clients but i want to put those into an email and send that out to the rest of the team so that would be underwriting funding shipping um closing departments the the owner of our company and just say hey thanks for your help to make this happen because it's interesting I honestly feel that the the service I get from my team and not just processing, but beyond that is the best marketing I can have. I mean, I can get a loan done so quickly. I can call my underwriter up and talk through a scenario. And I don't think they realize how much that means to my business. So I just want to show more gratitude to to them and what an important part they are to team. So that's one thing we're implementing. And then the other thing that we're going to do, and I think this was more, so uh, Tyson is my production partner and he came away with this idea. So I don't think this idea was actually given during one of the meetings because I didn't hear it, but he kind of had the idea because of everything else we were listening to. And so we're going to add a page to our website that is for realtors. And on this page, we're going to have realtor testimonials. And then we have kind of this triple advantage thing that we're creating to help realtors get more prospects and get more offers accepted and work better with listing agents. So we're just going to have a page where we can direct realtors so they get maybe get to know us a little bit better and our system and how we work with realtors and i think it'll just be a great tool so i take action really quickly so yesterday morning i sent out 18 emails to real estate agents and i've gotten already i think six back with testimonials and so we're going to be creating that page and it's crazy like i've been doing this 27 years never thought of that idea before so so sometimes coming to an event or just listening on a, a webinar or something just gives you an idea that maybe not even be anything that todd and i are talking about or a variation of something that we bring up today, but it just kind of gives you an opportunity to think about your business and come up with something that you would not have thought of otherwise. So those are kind of my two takeaway things that I'm implementing into our business right away. Well, I love it. I love the first part where you're actually including your team members in the 
kind of in sharing the love, right? Because yeah. the team members that are behind the scenes, right? The loan officers, you guys <laughs> you are out get front. The complaints. <laughs> well, that's true. They get the complaints, but you guys get all the, all the props, right? You get all the, the fame and glory um, and oftentimes the bigger paycheck than the people behind sure. the scenes. So I think anytime that you can add extra gratitude to them so that they have that, I think that's a, that's a huge idea. And it was pretty easy. How long did it take to get that going? Uh, yeah. Five minutes. Yeah, really. To send right. out 18 emails that I copied and pasted. But, but here's the thing. I feel like I have this bank account with my underwriting and my closing team and, and everybody involved. And, um, I put into that bank account as often as I can, meaning I don't, I don't push. I try to give them, you know, lots of times to do what they need to do. If I don't agree with the condition, if it's not vital, I'll still get the condition, even if I don't agree with it. Right. So I built up this bank account so that when I do need to ask for a favor or when I need something done really quickly and uh, need people to kind of step up and do something they wouldn't normally do, I have this bank account of all the things that I try to do to make their life a little bit easier and be kinder and show love. So honestly, I get yes almost every time I ask for a favor. And so because I, I try not to do it very often and I've built that up. So to me, this is just a, a great idea to add to that bank account for each of them. So I love that idea that it's a bank account because I've always felt like that was like the MVP of the team or the people behind the yeah. scenes. So anytime that I've been in an office where we had shared space with underwriting, we would do mm -hmm you know, ice cream day where they would come in and we would serve them and build Sundays. We would bring yeah. food and we would always serve them. And so I, I've never heard anyone put it quite like that, but I think that's a great yeah. way to look at it, making well, deposits so that if you need to make yeah. a draw, you can. So it actually makes me think, so once a month, the owner, I work for a small local company and the owner of our company brings in two massage therapists once a month nice. and we, they just have a sign up for 15 minute slots. And um, I actually heard, uh, great, here's another idea, and I haven't done this, someone else in my office did this, but for his Christmas gifts, he invited realtors to come to the office to pick up their, uh, I think it was a book or a, maybe it was a blanket, I don't even remember what, but he actually had it scheduled with the massage therapist. Oh, nice. And so they could sign up for a 15 minute slot to come in, get a 15 minute um, massage. He was able to chat with them and tell them, you know, Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and uh, and share that with them. So just another, there's so many different ideas out there, right? That's just another one. Total score. And so, I, you know, I think kind of as you guys think through it, what I'm realizing is, is nobody's asking us any or giving us any of their sales mastery takeaways, which tells me that all of you honor all of you who are watching from home. So you guys got to start asking us some questions. That would be fabulous. And, you know, again, I think it's always the the idea of taking action, right? So what Bliss said was, is they sat here, and they listen. And anytime you've got a second or third opinion, you know, the cool thing that Bliss did is she brought her two team members with her. So not only is she hearing it, they're also hearing it. And you already heard her say that they had different ideas uh, about yeah. things. And so I think that's pretty cool. And um, the other thing I want to have Bliss talk about is her triple advantage program, because this is kind of cool. Again, swipe and adapt this is something you guys can take. Yeah. So, and some of this, we, uh, some of this, I actually took from, I think some mortgage coach videos, um, or, you know, the mastermind calls. Sometimes I don't know where all the ideas come in and, and we put them together. I actually wish I just got my flyer worked up for this. I really like how it turned out. But, um, and maybe I'll try to, actually what I'll do is I'll post it on the Facebook page so you guys can kind of see how I put this together. And so I wanted to come up with something to give to realtors that would help set me apart, help them potentially get more business. So we come up with this triple advantage. So number one is a thousand dollars to the seller if we can't close the loan. So I don't ever get to the point of making an offer if we can't close the loan. So I'm hoping I never have to pay that thousand dollars, but, but it's something where we're, we're in a lot of multiple offer situations. So it's something that when we, then when one of my agent goes in to make an offer, not only are they going to have a credit approval letter, they're also going to have this triple advantage from their buyer's lender. Number one is if the loan doesn't close, I'm going to write a check to the seller for $1,000. Advantage number two is for the buyer. If we don't close on time, we will pay them $100 a day that we can't close on time. Again, I close everything on time for the most part. And of course we have some caveats, right? They've got to give us their information within a certain time period. If they choose um, something that will on their part delay it. So for example, I have someone right now that's getting a second mortgage on another property um, to be able to close on this property and he didn't get it done in time. Ooh. So we had to get an extension on the contract. I'm not going to pay him a hundred dollars a day, <laughs> nope. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm protecting myself a little bit on that. And then the third advantage is something that I've been offering for a number of years now. Um, we have a small 
moving company that we pay to move people. So we give everybody two guys for four hours when they're moving. And so it's, I, you know, I, we played around with the words a little bit when we were creating this. I didn't want it to be guarantee because it really kind of covers more than just guaranteeing something for someone. And so it's the thousand dollars to the seller if we can't close the buyer, hundred dollars a day to the buyer if we don't close on time, and then two guys for four hours to help them move. And so it's really speaking to a lot of the pain points that the real estate agent and the buyers have for us to hopefully be different from our competitors. All right, so a couple things. First off, I have to put my compliance hat on. Yes. Make sure that you yes. keep your compliance approval for the $1,000 and $100 a day. And we sent it to our day. attorney and our attorney, our compliance guy said it was fine. Everybody's compliance guy is different. And so don't send me emails that you know, you're know you mad at me because you can't do it, right? Everybody look, looks at things differently. And so we okayed it with our compliance people. So. All right, so tell me about the two guys for four hours to move. What percentage of your buyers yeah, take advantage of that, that and then how much does it cost? So the retail cost of that is $300. Um, they only charge me two fifty, dollars so they give me a little bit of a discount on that. So I spend $250 every time. And last year, I think I had about 36% of my clients use it. Because you know, if you have refinance, obviously they're not gonna use it. Someone's moving here from out of state, they already have a mover, they're not gonna do it. Some people, they just have friends and family. Um, you know, and sometimes if it's a really busy time of year and you can only move on Saturday, July 14, and there you didn't call in time, they, they can't do it that day. Um, luckily that doesn't happen too much. But so, so I figure that that's really only costing me about, I would say 75 to hundred dollars per transaction across the board. That's not bad. And I've done so many different closing gifts over the years. Some of the tackiest things ever, right? Um, but I've been doing this for a couple of years. We created a little cartoon, um, promotion for it. And even though not everyone takes advantage of it, it is a, it is something that weighs in when someone's comparing me to someone else. And so, yeah. And so do you send a closing gift that's different to the people who choose not to do the movie? No, no. I've, I've had people ask me before, Hey, I can't, I'm not going to take advantage of that. Will you give me X for $300? <laughs> And in, to be honest with you, in one case, I did give them something. I felt comfortable with that, but I don't get asked that very often. I'm really cheap, but I wouldn't ask that. Yeah, I know. It was interesting. Um, and so at closing, when I go to my closing, I take just a little mug that we created that has a little house and it says, follow your bliss. Cause when you oh, have a weird name, nice. you kind of get, I'm going to bring you a mug. You kind of have to use your weird name in your marketing. Um, so I take that to closing and then about four to eight weeks after closing, I get, and this is Eric Zanatelli, by the way, if you're on, hi Eric, um, gave me this idea. He does this as well from personalizationmall.com. Okay. It's a personalized doormat. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I, I actually only order them about four times a year. So I order quite a few at one time and you can get some really great discount point, point or discount codes and really inexpensive shipping when you order that many. And then my mom, who I love, um, delivers them for That's me. That's good. I'm glad you love so your mom. So I know it's important to love your mom and she loves to do it. She's retired and she's just this cute little gray haired old lady and she texts them and she says, I'm coming by. If you're there, I want to take a picture of you. And if you're not there, I'll leave it on your doorstep. And would you please send Bliss or myself a picture of you with your doormat? So then we can use that in social media a little bit. So that ends up costing me about $20. I think the mugs are up five bucks. So I'm all in around $100 per transaction for that part of my business. Well, and I like that because those are ideas that are things that stick with people. I've heard people say like, oh, I'm going to give a Home Depot gift card or a restaurant gift card. That. And my belief is, is that that's just, it's not that personal, right? And it doesn't have them remember you. Can I tell you the worst clothing gift ever? Absolutely. So everybody can. So back in the 90s, we bought a lot. Pagers? Of heart-shaped heart shaped mm -hmm. jars yeah. that were filled with colored house-shaped pasta with a baby blue and dusty pink bow nice. on it. Oh no, they were, they, they were bad. That was a great they idea. Were, were and so then we ended up not really using them. So we ended up throwing away all the pasta and filling them with candy. 
All right, and then so, giving away. So, so those of you who are on, <laughs> I would love to know your best and worst closing Absolutely. gift ideas. Throw it into the chat if you're on Zoom. And if you're yeah. on Facebook Live, throw in the Facebook Live. Let's hear what um, you guys are doing. It would be great to get some of those ideas. And um, if you're on Facebook here. Live and you've got a way to put a picture of it, put a picture of what, you, what you do. And, you know, I know there's so many different ideas out there. And I love to hear what other people are doing. And how long have you been doing it? And what do you feel, do you feel like, you know, like on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel the responses from your clients, right? Do they love it? Do they, do they just expect it? You know, kind of let's, let's get a feel for what people are doing and how good that response is. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really interesting. I love the doormat idea. I've got a couple of clients who do that as well. And I see them post them all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that there is a great opportunity to, to do something nice, but not go overboard, right? I mean, yeah. What, what Bliss is doing, she, she's addressing their pain points and then giving them something that they'll remember going forward. So mm -hmm. you guys can come up with something like that. That would be awesome. The, let's switch gears for a minute. So let's, let's sort of talk through um, other takeaways that you guys have had that may not be things that you're implementing, but you're hearing other people talk about here at Sales Mastery. I think a lot of what they're talking about, can I use the C word, the compression word? You, uh, well, compression? we can use compression, but that's, okay. yeah, that's all right. Right, so that's I heard the, rates went up. Yeah, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's fear. And so a lot of what they're talking about is, is that, right? How yeah. are you going to go forward with your business and grow your business when everybody across the board is down 30%? Yeah. So it's a lot of mindset. Sue Woodard's, her um, presentation was fabulous. The seven words. She's always fabulous. She is. And, you know, say there's certain things you need to say yes to, certain things you need to say no to. And let's see, let's see if I can remember them. Um, thanks, of course. That's, you know, we talk about that a little bit when we talk about, you know, reaching out and sharing your testimonials with more than just your immediate team. Um, wow, I think. You know, when I talk about the, the, the moving gift or the personalization mat, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to wow people. And so finding places at certain points during the process where you can wow people and give them something they didn't expect. Oh, I've got another idea. Let me share my other Let's idea. do it. Okay. So uh, this, this costs about $20, Amazon Prime, delivered for free. So once someone makes application with me on a new purchase, we actually send them through Amazon. It's a little moving package. So it is six rolls of packing tape. It's one of those, what are they called? Um, you know, the thing you put the packing tape in and you roll it. Tape gun. Tape gun. And it's only 20 bucks. Wait, I'm not done. Oh. There's more. I sound like a knife something. So then there's also a Sharpie marker. And then there's the Tega room stickers. So there's a whole bunch of stickers that say bedroom one, bedroom two, bathroom one, bathroom two, living room, office, right? Yeah. So it's this package. And we don't tell clients about that. We don't, we don't mention it anywhere in anything. It just shows up at their house. And it's when they make application. It's after they have a, they have a signed contract to buy a house. Okay. We've put it into processing. That's kind of my, my assistant's trigger point okay. is it's been pushed to processing. So she orders it. So they get it two to four days after they sign their documents and they love it. And then I actually send out a bomb bomb video the next day because unfortunately with Amazon, it's about this big in about size 10. That little piece of paper they that stick in. That little piece of paper that sticks in that's my message to them. So sometimes it gets missed. And so all of a sudden they get this package from Amazon they and Jeff Bezos they're likes. like, how did they know I was moving? <laughs> that's so creepy, right? So I want them to know it's me. So I send them a bomb bomb video a day after a we know it's hit their doorstep, just saying, hey, hope you got the package. Wanted to, you know, let you know, we're just so excited to help you. Please pass along our name if you know anybody else is looking to buy a house in the near future. Because I'm trying to ask for referrals at each of those steps as well. I love it. I love it because it's the easy button, right? First off, it's not expensive, right? You don't have yeah. to spend a lot of money to make an impression. And then number two is, is that she's built a system around it, right? She follows back up because of the mm -hmm. fact that it's got that little part in it. It's the easy button. She's not sending shipping 10 of them to her office and then trying to put it in a fancy package and send it yeah. out. She's just making it's up be for easier, the lack of it. it. Yeah, making up for the lack of personalization with the bomb bomb email, which saves time and money. So yeah. just think through what is you could do? So I see Oscar says he's using some knives. Are those custom knives, Oscar? I would love to, I would love to know. I always hear that that's a good gift. And I think I'd love to know what you're spending. I, you know, I hear that people are spending between 75 and 
$200 on those knives. And um, they have, a lot of times they have your name uh, or logo branded into them. And uh, he's saying they use it daily. So I would love to hear I've also heard what of, else. Um, pizza cutter people have given out that has had a lot of, I call it keepability, meaning people keep it a long time and see it. Um, I thought of one, can I jump back one step real Let's quick? keep going. Okay, so what, when I got the idea for that, uh, for that moving gift, I actually went and sent 10 of them directly to real estate agents that know me and kind of, I think they like me, but they don't really send me business, right? And I don't know why they wouldn't. And so I sent them that with a note from me saying, hey, this is what I am going to start sending to all of our clients as soon as they make application with me. But you might want to use this the next time you're making a listing presentation as a gift to your potential seller. And so not only did I share with them of something I'm adding to what I'm doing to their clients when they choose to use me, but also here's an idea of something for you to use for $20, $25 when you're doing a listing presentation. And so got some great response from that as well. You know, I'd be interested to know too what, what percent of them actually implement, right? I mean, again, that's, that's where we started yeah. this call. And, and it was one of the things I enjoyed when we were talking at lunch yesterday and you said, hey, I've already implemented these ideas. And again, people leave a conference like this full of ideas, right? You're always drinking from the fire hose. Yeah. I mean, there's amazing speakers on stage. There's the connection time in between the group meetings. There's connection time at, at dinner at night. I mean, there's always a lot of space for people to get together and connect. And so I do think it's pretty interesting that a lot of times people go and fail to do anything because they're overwhelmed. You guys are already implementing from here. So again, keep that, you know, I think that's still my biggest takeaway, but I love Bliss's ideas because they aren't that pricey and they're uh, you know, pretty much easy to implement. I mean, those aren't hard. Yeah, absolutely. And then find a way within any of those ideas to make sure that you're branding and asking for future business. And I think that's something that I'm always struggling to make sure that I do to try to see, you want to see a return on your investment, but it's really hard to actually quantify return on investment with a lot of what we do. Cause a lot of what we do is, is branding and you might do 10 different touches and be friends on social media. And then all of a sudden you get a deal from someone what caused them to give you that deal? You can't really quantify that with one thing. So you need to have multiple things as inexpensive as possible and as easy to implement as possible. That's when, kind of my criteria. And you're so good at marketing. What are some other things that you have sent to Realtors? What are, what are some of your previous campaigns? Because I remember. Uh, okay, toolkit. You want to talk about that? I remember the, the toolkit. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to hear that and see how that went. Um, so I went on the day after Thanksgiving to Harbor Freight Tools because, I don't know, stuff practically free that day, right? And AKA Black Friday. <laughs> Black Friday, yeah. So I bought these black canvas tool bags about, about this big. I think those were maybe seven dollars, super cheap on that on that day. And then we came up with I think it was five, so a total of six touches because the first one is the tool bag, and, and it's empty when they get it. It's empty, and I don't even remember the exact message, but something about hey, let's work together. I'm going to help you with the tools I have, um, that I'm going to be sharing with you, and then a measuring tape. I don't know, a screwdriver, I'll poke your eyes out if you don't use me. I don't remember. <laughs> like, I don't That's know. That's the kind of thing I would say. <laughs> I don't remember, I appreciate that. Probably not. So I, it's, it, that was probably about two years ago that we did that. And we did it about every two weeks um, going. And we would just put them in a little cellophane bag with a little thing with our message on it and drop it off for their, for their toolkit. And I remember you saying you delivered those to their office or yeah. home. Or and I only, from. I think I did maybe eight or 10 people and I didn't want it to be overwhelming to me. And it was at a time where it was a little bit slower. I think it was December to January that we did it. And I also, my assistant would deliver some, sometimes I would deliver some sometimes. And if they, if you, they weren't there when I delivered it, I would follow up with a phone call. He want to make sure you saw that. Cause some people was work from home. Creepy if they were at home and you dropped it off there or did you drop it off at their office? If they so were most of them were at their office or they have a, a desk or a box somewhere at their office where I know, and I let them know it's there. You can pick it up. There were a couple people that we delivered to home, but I know them, even though they, they don't really send me business, I know them well enough that I felt comfortable doing that. And so, and again, it was a small group. It wasn't a huge mass thing. And I think in the end, my cost per person was less than 20 bucks. It really was. Well, that's huge. And so think about this, right? I mean, it's a, it's a long campaign. 
she followed up, she executed, and it, and it wasn't hundreds of dollars, right? I mean, I think that that's always the key. I've got a really long post here from, uh, from Linda. So I would just say this, just a side note, it's really weird when you do an interview like this and the person sitting next to you, it's a lot easier if I'm looking, when you're looking and they're on Zoom. And so I'm managing Facebook Live down here. I'm taking notes here because of course, Bliss's ideas are amazing. Um, and so I love it that Linda sends a pair of crazy socks to the listing agent on a purchase transaction. Again, think about oh, how crazy, crazy that is, socks. right? Something drop shipped from Amazon to the listing agent. They're going to notice it's not something super boring. It's something different. So, so when you say crazy socks, like bacon and egg socks, kind of crazy. I don't know. She fun? didn't say here, but we can like ask her. But she said crazy socks. So I'm thinking that that would be um, okay. great. And then also some brownies that have a logo personalized on them. So again, check out the Facebook group. Those of you who aren't in there, right? So this call started off as part of the... Uh, was the insane productivity for mortgage coach mastermind and then Dave and I opened it up oh about 18 months ago for everybody to be involved so if you're on zoom but you're not part of that mortgage coach productivity mastermind group on Facebook just ask to join we would love to have you in there and that's where the Facebook live is going right now and, and all these notes are so um, I love that Linda those are some some yeah, great share closing ideas, gifts. You know? We all learn from each other, and I even even if you don't implement the specific ideas I gave or the crazy sock idea, or maybe you take the crazy sock idea and you go out and buy crazy socks for everybody in your office, right? What a fun idea! I actually really like that idea. There are there are some great ideas now. Of course, I'm drawing a blank on it because I know that uh, you can buy them for inexpensive too. Uh, Lori Richardson will be on that call that Dave's hosting on Tuesday. I remember she had a really inexpensive pair of socks that had something really cute on them that she did in the in her realtor campaign that I know she bought at the dollar store. Really? But of course, now I'm forgetting what those socks like were. Like maybe had dollar signs on them or dollar bills on them. That'd be kind of cute. Yeah, so what uh, Linda's saying on Facebook is is to go onto Amazon and just look up wild and crazy socks. And then she says she sends them in a bubble envelope that is a crazy color too. So, I mean, again, just think about this, right? Um, one of my biggest uh, concerns in the industry right now, what I'm talking to people, is this fear of how to approach listing agents, right? And, and granted, if you're newer in the business or you have fewer transactions, you've got less shots at the listing agent. So you got to make sure that every one of those shots count and you have to do it in a way that's, that's at least at the bar, right? So the bar is, is an introductory call to the listing agent. Hopefully when you're when the offer is submitted to, to show them that you're proactive with your buyers. Second would be at a minimum, as soon as you go under contract, you get that purchase and sale contract and you're moving forward, right? The introductory call with them to confirm what the details of the transaction are to confirm um, what the best way to communicate with them, confirm if there's anyone else on their team that you should be copying, and then to let them know that you'll be reaching out to them on a weekly basis with update calls. So add into that, which I think that's the, that's the gold standard, right? Because if you perform there weekly and you close on time and you communicate with them on a weekly basis, they're going to think that that's somewhat unique, right? Some people do that, yes, but most don't. You know, you may think everyone does, but I promise you they don't. And then you add in there these ideas of what like Linda's doing where she's sending crazy socks. I mean, it's just different, right? Think about how you can do that and make sure that you have a process for that. Because what I'm finding is, is that there's no doubt that today's most successful loan officers have a system of some sort, right? They actually have uh, things that they implement and follow. So when you hear Bliss talk about this, these are just things she's put in and they're on autopilot now, right? Anytime you start something, you've got to create that process then you've just got to get it on autopilot. And again, some of you have team members who can help you with it. Some of you have companies who help you with it. Most of you maybe do it on your own. And so just think about how you can build that system and then make sure that you execute and follow up. And get it written down and get it into checklists so that you don't have to rethink and recreate the wheel every time you're doing it. You just have a checklist of what you do. Another idea, and again, I wish I could remember who originally gave me the idea. I don't usually have very many original thoughts. I just have great people that I listen to. But there is a book for $4.95 I think you can order from Amazon. It's the Bernstein Bears. And it's called Moving Day. Oh yeah. Yeah. I did that based off of, I think it was Michelle Town on this call yes, that told me about that's it. that's who it was, Michelle. Yeah, it was Michelle. Amazing, you have such great ideas. So thank you for remembering it was Michelle. And there's actually two of them. It was on this call. We bought, I bought another one that was, uh, came up in the Amazon feed. People who bought this also bought this book. And so I, I got those right there. So I've um, got a couple of things coming in here. Someone else is um, throwing out there the, the, the tried and true idea. Um, I'd seen actually Bill Hart and Todd Duncan do it on stage years ago at Mastery where you send the listing agent a big box and then it's got helium balloons in it that have some kind of thing tied to it. So when they open the box, the balloons go up. So that's a, that's a great one, Will. That's a great yeah. uh, reminder. There's people complimenting Bliss for her amazing ideas. So yes, oh, thank, thank you. you. They are, yeah. you know, they are uh, yeah. amazing. Oh, it looks the, like Maureen is asking uh, if, does Amazon actually have a moving kit 
that includes that. Yeah, so it's actually a whole kit. I can't remember, and I'll, I can go in and put the link in the Facebook post great. after we do this. I think we were paying twenty four ninety five for it, but I think I saw it for maybe 20 bucks, so a little bit cheaper for all of that stuff. So, oh, Maureen found it. Maureen, can you... Um, Put that link in there if you're if you I don't know if you're on Facebook Live or where you are, but we'll get that out so you guys can find that super easy to do. So here's the kind of thing in full transparency. I remember seeing somebody talk about this before in our productivity mastermind group. I can remember going to face or going to Amazon and looking at it and saying that's a great idea and never implementing it. Right. So again, if this seems like a good idea to you, then go ahead and do it. Right. Get it ordered up. Bring one. Ship one to yourself at your office first, so you can see what it looks yeah. like and how it comes in. Right. Invest the twenty five dollars yeah. because then again, well, you can show it to an agent when you meet with yeah. him or her live. When I when I first decided to do the the doormats, I actually ordered one with my name on it to deliver to my house. I wanted to see how it wore. You know, I went out in front of my door. I wanted to see is this going to look like something you we have one that says welcome to the book spans yeah one. yeah but you know i wanted to make sure it was something that was fairly good quality i mean it's 20 bucks right so you can't expect super high but i didn't want a week later for me to say yeah i'm not keeping that in front of my house and so so far so good with that and yeah just pick just pick one idea and implement it so maureen did put it in the facebook thank oh, you maureen, maureen. rock you know, it's funny because I, I thought about that too when it gets worn out because I think mine's probably been out in front of my house for five or six months. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about maybe with your top 25 clients sending them a new one next year? I haven't. So That's I wonder if idea. anyone's doing that. I know there's some people out there uh, who, are, who are using those. Actually, well, how about, so I get quite a few referrals from past clients. Mm -hmm. How about if it's a past client from a couple of years ago? That's send when you one. send it to there them. There you go. As Great a idea. thank you gift for, I, I actually have some past clients that have, referred me more business than I get from realtors that I wine and dine and, you know, spend a lot of time marketing to. So you, if hopefully we all have clients like that and we need to show appreciation to them. Well, I'd love to hear. So let's, let's shift gears to client appreciations. And one of the things that I've, that I've heard, I'm a lot of, you know, Dave Gallegos, who was also part of the original mortgage coach productivity mastermind mentor team and had dinner with Dave and his team last night here at sales mastery. And he talked about the fact that you know, he believes it's, they're talking a lot about going deep on personal relationships. And I think that that means with your partners, but actually with your clients, right? If you saw Dave's digital uh, brief that he did, we talked about it on our hundredth call. He kind of did a quick segment on it and then he did a separate video. Um, I'll make sure that we throw the, the link to that here in YouTube so that you guys can see those videos. But really Dave talked about the fact that, you know, the, the person who controls the client gets the client first is really going to control the transaction. And I do think that we're hearing a lot about it's almost like what's old is new again, right? Oh, yeah. It's kind of like this back That's to the future definitely thing. definitely a theme and is back to the basics, back to the things that are going to connect you with people. So, so what, else, what else are you doing for your database and your past clients? Um, so that we will have our second annual customer appreciation movie night. Oh, nice. So last year we did Star Wars for in December. Yeah. This year we're doing the Grinch in November. It's a little bit more of a family oriented one. I don't promote this to my real estate agents. I feel like I do a lot for my realtors. And so I want this one to be just for past clients and, um, just super fun. It's kind of my only event that I do every year. So kind of just fit that into my budget. And we rent out a smaller theater. We do it on a Tuesday night so that we can get the cheaper matinee price. It's all about bargains. I am all about bargains. I mean, when you're spending that much money, you gotta be a little bit careful, right? Um, another loan officer in my office, she actually does quite a few of these a year and does them with a couple of partners. Insurance, I'm not sure who else she has involved. I choose to only do one and not do it with anyone else. I've had a couple of real estate agents ask if I want to co-sponsor it with them. I choose not to do that for a couple of reasons. One, it kind of dilutes my message a little bit. Um, I feel, and I want to have as much impact as I can. Also, if I'm doing it with uh, Susie Realtor and I'm trying to get business from all these other realtors that are seeing me promote that, I just, that's just kind of a line that I, we all draw lines somewhere. And so I try to be very careful that when I do an event, it's really just me. So I keep it not huge. I rent out a pretty small theater. The seats don't recline. I can't afford reclining seats. Well, all right. So let me give you the, our take on it. I 100% agree about the not jumping in on someone else's, mm -hmm. because again, I kind of feel like you're the third wheel, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if, 
you know, you're not going to have as much impact because you're not going to, they're not all your clients who are there, right? They may have paid cash. They may have used a different lender. So you have less impact. And I think that once you say yes to someone, you almost feel like you have to say yes to everyone. And so I would get comfortable saying no and being wise with your dollars going into 2019. Um, We've gone the two movies a year route and Star Wars messed it up for us because for the last three years, they've had a Star Wars movie Uh, that came out at Christmas. And then we've been doing a Disney movie in the summer. And so we just did The Incredibles in the summer. And we do it the Saturday, uh, Incredibles 2. It was awesome. Yeah. We did it on the Saturday of that it came out in the morning. And we had, we're a little crazy because we live in Phoenix. It's big. You know, we've closed over 3,000 loans. And it was actually three different theaters. So one was in one part of town, the west part. One was in middle. And then one was in the west spread out by two hours. Okay. So each one you have group and then we had team members at each one. And then uh, my business partner who runs a team with my wife, he went to each one and did the welcome message. Mm-hmm. And what I found was interesting because I was at two of them and I watched it the second one. I didn't drive to the third one. I did you watched dress it with my up family. in Incredibles? I didn't dress up. We got a cut, we got cutouts. Picture? So we had cutouts for of the Incredibles. And then we okay. had uh, our little step and repeat with our team information on it. Step and then we and took repeat. pictures. Yeah. It's like one of those things you see when you go to like fashion week and it has all the logos of all oh, the sponsors yeah. behind you. Okay. So we set that up in the and theater. For photos. We did photos. We had a photographer there and, and then we put them up on a website. And then of course you had the people who weren't part of the group who said, Hey, can I, have my kids have a picture with the yeah. Incredibles. And so that was, okay. you know, that was pretty cool. The, the movie idea. theater used to have a thing where if you bought gift cards, uh, for a certain amount, they would give you a coupon for free popcorn. And so oh. then we give free popcorn mm-hmm. out to people. Because again, we didn't want to spend so money on that. that so so that's, well, the, the that's the key. The oh, you mailed the photos out. Oh, we mailed the photos. I forgot about that. We got, we've got <laughs> Adam over here and he's watching us in the hotel. We're making sure we don't forget all the cool things that he well, set up. So with the theater I do it with, they actually require us to buy $250 worth of $10 gift cards. Oh, that's nice. So I don't use those for that night. I actually oh, I love it. save those gift cards and use them for other I'm, purposes. I'm really cheap. She's cheaper than me. Not on everything, but on some things. So that's a lot of money to spend. I'm already giving them free tickets. We do some giveaways. So when we did Star Wars, we had a couple of the lightsabers. Oh, nice. And we had just a couple of Star Wars toys and a couple of gift cards that we gave away. And so before the movie started, I get a little bit of time in a microphone, and I just go up in front of everybody and just welcome I think last year was my first time. I think this year I need to put a little bit more thought into what I'm saying as far as, hey, I appreciate your business and I really want to help your friends and family. So I need to be more vocal in asking for business from this group. About 23% of my business comes from either past clients doing new loans or past client referrals. And so I would love to step that up even a little bit more. And if I'm going to spend the money, the time, and the effort on a movie event, I need to put a little bit more thought into what do I want out of that and be a little bit more intentional. Sometimes I just kind of fly by the seat of my hands. I'm good at the big idea, right? Sometimes I need to drill down a little bit more deeper, especially in this market where you're fighting so hard to get loans. And anybody that that doesn't think that's going to get worse, I got a... I got news for you, right? You're going to be fighting for loans. And so how are you positioned and how are you, you know, an an interesting thing happened to me not very long ago where a realtor referred a client to me. And when the client called me up and he's like, so I told someone I was thinking about buying a house and they're like, you need to call my lender. You need to call Bliss. And then my realtor said, I needed to call you. And those two people don't even know each other. (laughs) So as you spread out these ambassadors for your business, then, and people hear your name more than one place, they're going to be a lot less likely to take their shopping experience to the internet, um, to an internet solely based company. And that's my goal is to keep spreading that, those ambassadors so that I've got more and more people that know who I am, know I do a good job and feel the sense of urgency that they need to give out my name. So and me- that's, that's a huge thing that I'm going to put time and effort into this next year. I I think it's important. And so I think that there's, you have to be intentional about it. Cause I just like bliss, when we first did it, we were not. Um, But I would say a couple of other observations and a couple of other things that we did at movies. And if anyone else did movies and you're on Facebook or in zoom, I'd love to, I want, I love love to hear about it. Love it. But, um, but what I would say, what we did was 
Um, you know, our team after I stopped originating fell out of the habit of doing annual mortgage reviews. That was me and I did that. That was sort of my, you know, my driver. And really when Dave first started, ever had me on a mortgage coach call was all around annual mortgage reviews. And so to get those relaunched, we actually created a thing where it was a, a loyalty advantage club where you got to get into the movies first. I mean, you got to reserve it before we ran out of seats. Cause like Bliss said, you can so, pick the theater size. You can say no to yeah. people. That's all right. And there were people who, who didn't get in in time and, and they didn't fit in there. And so, so now if they were part of your, explain, help me understand. So if they were, how, how did you determine that they were part of this premier group? So we just said, if you want to be in the group, then fill out this form. And that form had them oh. update us on their current mortgage. Okay. And then, so it was a lazy way to, to do a mortgage review. So it just awesome. said, awesome, just send us your stuff. Especially and then, if you haven't done one got it. for a long time. I'd actually never done a mortgage review until mortgage coach Dave and, and you and everybody else that just, gave us so much information about mortgage reviews i really hadn't done them before so i started about a year ago and uh that's a brilliant idea if you haven't done them and you've got a database what a fun idea well, to say hook them right you're yeah. hooking them and then when you get up in the front of the room right the theater will give you you can choose whether the theater has runs previews or not so again we nix the previews especially if it's a kids movie because no one really wants to see, see those and then we would get up and do a commercial we would always say thank you so much um for uh, for your trust in us and for your referrals. Again, we were kind of future casting that. And then we had a, we actually had a, a referral form this last year that we dropped in there. We got a couple. It wasn't like we got a huge amount, but we gave them something to actually um, write. And I can't remember if we had them fill That's it out and get a, 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 Adam, a prize. That's what me. I would do is, okay. you know, I'm filled out and get a, <laughs> and get a prize. So I think that's pretty good. I'm getting another suggestion from Will. He gives out a mileage booklet for the people who actually have to, uh, who have to keep track of their miles, right? Like realtors are supposed oh, right. to be keeping track of that for okay. the tax code. If that's still a, I don't even know if that's still a write-off anymore, but maybe it is. We'll assume it's still a write-off. I hope so. I don't, I don't know. Um, Great idea. Yeah. I haven't thought about what the new tax law is this week, even though your taxes are due in a few days, if you're one of those extenders. Hey, I'd like to know if anybody on the call has something they have sent out, especially to realtor partners that, that are in that self-employed space. If anybody has anything they've sent out saying, hey, this is how the new tax laws are going to affect you. Did you know? I love that, right? Yeah. I don't have to create it myself. Um, so <laughs> if anybody has that, let's share it with each other. Yeah, That'd be a great thing. Put and it post there. it on Facebook, you know, and uh, within Mortgage Coach. So then we can share it with our referral partners and look like the expert to other people. I did a video not too long ago on capital gains because I'm in my area. Price appreciation has happened so fast that people have been in their house 12 to 18 months and they're realizing the equity they have, they can go from a townhome or a condo into a single family. And uh, so that's a big question right now is capital gains. And so I did a brief interview on that or um, a brief video on that and got quite a few views from that. So I love that. So, you know, one of the things you've been really good at is video, you know, any, any thoughts or suggestions? Do you have a calendar for it? Is it a certain frequency? Are you putting a list together? Or is it just like, hey, I'm thinking about this today. Yeah, and I just so jump on and record. We keep a running list of ideas. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing about video, if you're not doing it, is just step off the ledge, right? I have, so, so even this video that I'm doing right now with Todd, I can see myself on this little screen, right? And I just keep averting my eyes. I don't like to watch myself on video. It's actually really hard for me. I feel uncomfortable. And so when I, it, it helped that I'd been doing the mortgage coach videos for years, right? Used to take me five or 10 takes to do that. Now, as long as, as long as I'm not, you know, got boogers hanging out of my own nose, it's done. I don't care if I stumble over my words. That's, that's how I talk. Sometimes I don't finish my sentence. Sometimes I interrupt myself, right? And so that's authentic. And so get over yourself, just do something. I would recommend that you go, so uh, pick a couple people in the mortgage space that are doing videos. Eric Zanatelli, I'll bring him up again. He's been doing great stuff with video and they're short and they're simple and it's just informative. Go to his page, go to my uh, Mortgages by Bliss Facebook page if you aren't already a part of that and just take a look at some of the ones we've done. The best one we did was actually super fun. So we took pieces of white paper we had no speaking in the video at all. And I just would hold up a piece of paper and it would say, are you still living at home? I saw this one. Are you, in mom, are you in mommy's basement? And we, it did take us a few tries to get it because 
I wanted it to have a little humor in it, like with my facial expressions. And so we probably did about eight or 10 takes with it. But I think that one's up to like 2,600 views. That's awesome. And it was just very different. We're just kind of making fun of people that haven't bought a house yet, telling them they really need to buy a house, but in a very different way. Right now, we're going to do a four-part series on USDA with some, they're about, about a minute and a half each, different things about USDA. And then I'm going to have them on one page on my website. So I can send that to real estate agents and say, hey, you know, if you've got listings in the USDA areas, or these are maybe your type of buyers, send them this page with these four videos. And then maybe we'll even use them that, um, that web page with the four videos on some Facebook advertising. So it's just, I'm always trying to come up with something that's a little bit different because sometimes I think it gets a little bit boring and people stop watching videos because it's just me sitting in my desk talking about something related to mortgages. And unless that's you in the moment, what's going to make you push play? Right. And mortgages aren't that interesting just for yeah. the general knowledge people, although it is good. I if think they are, but it's <laughs> kind of like, you we know when your reticular activator gets, gets going, right. And you think about buying a red car and all of a sudden all you yeah. see are red cars. Yeah. However, so that is good if, for the people who are thinking about it, but what is it you can do for the people who aren't? Because I, so I watch that video blisses and you know, I see a lot of you who I know on Facebook and I do watch some of your videos occasionally, but oftentimes I don't because I just know it's a quick market update, which is fine. I would tell you that when I did those for years, those quick market updates, what was cool about it was is that I had realtors who would never read a market update who would actually watch the video and they always said that they liked them because they weren't very good, which... Yeah was just more like they weren't overproduced, right? Yeah. So you don't need a fancy introduction. You don't need a fancy fancy out. You don't need to do 12 takes. Just, yeah. just be yourself. Well, and actually, I like what Will just said on here. He said, when I um, foul up on the phone or video, I will say, let me untwist my tongue. There you go. Just make it a personal, right? We all, we all stumble over our words constantly. And so you're actually going to be more approachable to people. I have also found we do the, uh, the words at the bottom of the screen. Oh, a little teleprompter uh -huh. or so, teletyper, no, whatever yeah, you call so the it, people, transcription. Because personally, when I'm scrolling through Facebook, I actually don't turn the sound on for most videos. I will just read the words. And so I thought if I'm that way, that's let's huge. see if we get a little bit more views if we do that so they don't have to turn the sound on. And so that's just another little tip that will probably get you more views. So I think that's, um, that's, that's pretty critical. That's great. So we're down to about 13 minutes left. If you guys have suggestions, if you guys have done any of these things, videos, put it into the Facebook Live or into the chat here on Zoom. If you have any other questions you'd like to ask Bliss, because it's not often we're going to have Bliss ahead. here live, you know, we can ask her. It's great because one of the things that Linda said is that she's using Zoom now with her clients and she's actually using it to show TCA. So many of you may not be aware, but Zoom has a free account that you can get and then you can actually share your screen with the person on the other side. So question for you on Zoom. So what's the difference between say just using Zoom or using the video on your computer within Mortgage Coach? Is it that? I think the difference is you can see the people's face, right? Oh, and so I okay, think that so there's such a push for one-on-one. -on -one. You know, when I did, when I go to the movies even now, it's funny that clients who come up and give me a big hug, you know, the little ladies give me a big kiss on the cheek are the people who I met with in face to face. Yeah. Right. I mean, it was, yeah. I laughed that last year that I did production, the only in process referrals I got were from clients who I sat with face to face. So again, think about what's old is new again. If you can get your clients in there, best practice is face to face. Second best practice is do it on video. And, and so that's just taking what mortgage coach already has built in, right? Cause you can do edge live, which is great. However, if you can just jump in there and actually be, have them see you while you're talking. And you see them. And it's That's an expensive, yeah, we're developing our win by noon app. And I met with a developer here at Sales Master while I was eating lunch. I popped up Zoom and he showed me live what the app looked like so far. And so it was just a great tool to be able to do that because he's been telling me, oh, it looks really good. And I'm like, all right, that's great. Mm -hmm. It was a lot better to have him on video showing me and doing the screen share. So you can do a Zoom account for free. So probably just a basic account mm -hmm. and then like go and show that with your mortgage coach. Yep. That's what cool. Linda's doing. So cool, Linda. It, that's awesome. It's, it's in there. And if you have any other tips, just let us, let us know. That would be, um, that would be great. You know, I think it's a, you know, again, be thinking about as you kind of go in here. So um, I love it too. Cause, um, cause we've got in there the link to, uh, Dave's uh, digital 
download, whatever you called it. I saw it a minute ago. I'm, I'm flipping through here, but it's always hard because it's hard to look at the camera. It's hard to look at bliss. It's hard to look down on my phone. My goal is just to continue, continue rolling. So um, someone's asking again about your uh, closing guarantee. What are those caveats? And I, you know, I, first thing I'll say is again, your company's probably going to have their own. But yeah. So, so basically I came up with the idea and then we shot that information over to our compliance attorneys just to make sure. And so with the, so the number, the first advantage is thousand dollars to the seller if it does not close. And so that would be if it doesn't close due to, um, due to underwriting. So if the, if, if the borrower backs out within their due diligence period, I'm not going to pay the seller. That's if we say we can do a transaction and then we're not able to do the transaction. And then the hundred dollars a day, if we don't close on time, that goes to the buyer. Again, that's going to be, we're going to give them deadlines for their documentation and they have to meet those deadlines for us to be able to close on time. And um, yeah, I mean, you can set your, your caveats, you can set your little asterisks however you want to, to protect your company. And you need to, you absolutely need to. Yeah, I would say everyone that I know that's doing it, they're, they're pretty straightforward, right? Like you can't quit your job. You know, you have to have turned in all your documentation. The seller can't delay escrow because they didn't do the repairs. Right. I mean, there's, there's all those right. types of things in there it's, that you want to back it up. Because in the end, it's, it's really just there if you fail to perform, right? You did yeah. a poor job or your company doesn't hit the close of escrow for some reason. And again, most of the people who are doing that aren't, uh, they're not, they're great at doing loans, which should be all of you. And they're protecting themselves so that they're not ever paying out. Right. I mean, in the end, yeah. If you say you're going to do it and you do mess up, pay. I'll pay. I'd be happy to pay it. Right. Cause it's going to happen so very seldom. So yeah, with the hundred dollars a day to the buyer, if it doesn't close on time, one of the caveats to that is, is that if the seller delays the closing, I'm not going to pay hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Totally makes sense. The seller can pay it if they want, but I'm not going to pay. Totally makes sense. Yeah. So if any of the rest of you have a guarantee like that, we'd love to have you guys post it in there. One other thing I'll throw up there on the video ideas is remember, if you're in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind, over to the left side, there's a files uh, box where you can type in to yeah. search something. And in the files, there's Tim Lamb did two documents. So I don't know, about a year ago. And it's got a ton of different video ideas in there. Oh, and, right. I yeah, I recently that. pulled that myself for my team to yeah. be able to record videos. And I've just gone out into the mortgage space and friended people on, on in the, so people within Mortgage Coach, Jen DePlus, um, Michelle Towns, um, just different people that I know are killing it, that when I grow up, I want to be kind of like them. Yeah. And so I want to see what they're doing on social media. So find people that aren't your competitors outside of your area, become friends with them. I mean, I think that's probably one of the most fun things about coming to sales mastery is you see people that you know you've kind of been having the same battle for the last 10 or 20 years right and it's fun to reconnect or connect with them and with social media you, you i was in the elevator actually going to down to the first meeting and this guy got on the elevator and he's like are you bliss lawyer <laughs> I love it. i'm like yeah he's like oh I just loved watching your trip to Alaska this summer. See, there you go. I'm like, awesome. Because, <laughs> right, he feels connected to me because we're friends on Facebook. And so there's a lot of power in that to use, not only for getting business within your sphere of influence and your geographical area, but like this mastermind group that we all belong to, getting to know other people in other parts of the country that are going to have ideas to, that you can use in your business. It doesn't take away from them. You're not competitors. Mm -hmm right? You're not going to be marketing to the same people. In fact, I'll, I'll see something on Facebook, like um, uh, somebody posted on Facebook, I can get you 0% interest rate, but you have to put 100% down. <laughs> now, I will tell you, whenever I see something like that, I don't like to share it because then it looks, you just, it's another layer, right? I like to just post it from me, but I always ask. And so I'll go to that person and I'll just say, hey, that was really funny. Do you mind if I use that? And nobody's ever said no to me. And so, you know, look through, look through my stuff, look through my Instagram mortgage by bliss or my social media page, you know, um, and go ahead and borrow some of those ideas, right? Let's all be better together. Well, and I would, and I would go even a step further because, uh, like, like my good friend Linda Davidson is here at sales mastery. Yeah. And, um, I, when I was producing and I would put out my, my video every week, it would go to Linda and then I got Linda's her weekly newsletter yeah, as well. Yeah. And I would always, there's nothing that put a bigger smile on my face than seeing what I put in my video. Cause I did a video and then I did a written piece that went along with it. But 
we had a permission to swipe and adapt. So I loved stealing her stuff and using it. And she would occasionally, not nearly as much as I stole her stuff, use something from mine and put it in hers. And just, it made me smile that I was able to actually um, help her a little easier. Yeah. So maybe find someone else in this group or elsewhere that's got a newsletter, subscribe to listen with their permission repost. I love that you, you did put that out yeah. there. I'm all throughout there too. Make sure we put it down below with the link. If you are nervous about video and you want to learn about it, Dave and I interviewed Kelly Zitlow. Oh, she's amazing. Her oh, stuff is about awesome. a year and a half ago in the summer. And she walked through her class that she teaches realtors on how to get comfortable with video. So it was a great kind of basics of what you can do with video and get comfortable with it. And what she said was, you know, she had to get used to the fact that one of her eyes looked different than the other and all that. Or maybe that's just me who thinks that, that because this eye's not there, you know, with the other one, a little, little off. Um, and so, all right, so we're rolling into the last few minutes here. I'm just checking for other um, question and, uh, someone saying what a special lady Linda is. Uh, she really is. She's, she's awesome. And I think that's kind of what you find at these events. What I loved this year was this is bliss's first year ever yeah. here. And she's been in the business for I never wanted to come a little before. while. Just weird reasons, right? A little but while, but it's uh, been fun. Yeah, there's been a lot of people here that have been never been before, and you know, some events you feel like, oh gosh, I can't go every year and, and do that. And I feel like like you have to figure out at least once a year, maybe every other year, to go to something where you can connect with other people, whether it's just a small local event. You know, there's lots of small little local events going on. Yeah, you know, I would just well, keep I, an eye out for I those. struggled with. Well, I started about my production manager and my assistant with me, and uh, so that's kind of, kind of pricey, right? Um, you've got flights, you've got hotel, all of that stuff. But I wanted their perspective on everything that we were going to be hearing, and I wanted their buy-in. I didn't want to come get all popped up on ideas and go back to the office and have them not be on board with implementing it. So they're as excited as I am to take some of this information and make our business better and to grow it. Yeah, I think that's really huge. I did an adventure this week. I decided to go on Facebook Live. I've thought about it for a long time. And ironically, this is on Facebook Live, but I don't feel like it's really me just having to jump on and talk about something. And it was a really interesting experience. Now I decided I'm going to commit to doing it for 30 straight days. I don't know if I'll keep going after that or not. Every day for 30 days? Yeah, I think nice. people are going to get bored of yeah. me after a while. Yeah. And we'll then see. I almost forgot last night I was at dinner. I'm like, holy smokes, like I got to actually run out and do a yeah. do Facebook Live real quick. So I did it on a street corner and and so that was a little bit awkward too, because I realized I was on a street corner in San Diego. My brother-in-law is out here working right now. So I had to invite him to dinner tonight. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's really interesting, the whole idea of just jumping out there. So if you're thinking about going to a, an event like that, I would check it out. I did a Facebook Live the first day here talking about how to best prepare and get the most out of an event like this. Mm -hmm. So I think that was pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see, someone is asking me the question, um, if the doormats have the client's last name. So probably on 90% of them, I do put the family name on there. There's so many different variations of what you can do. There's lots of choices. Some of them for just maybe there is like um, two people with two different last names that are purchasing the home. And I don't want to, I don't want it to be weird or anything. There's one variation of the doormat where you can just have the, the house number. So 5124 and then in smaller, it says South Point Avenue. And so it's still a little personal because it is um, for their house, but 90% of the one I do their last name, one of my favorite one is actually, it's the state and it says there's no place like home and it has the state, um, outline of the state in the middle of oh, it. Nice. And then you have their name and you can actually personalize it however you want to. But I really like that one for people that are moving here from another state for work yeah. or whatever. Hey, welcome to our state. There's so much good about our state, you know, and I'm glad that you're here. So, yeah. You make them feel welcome in the beautiful state of Utah. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, believe it or not, we are, we are sailing to the fast. end. Uh, you know, we appreciate all of awesome. you hanging out and, uh, and being with us for this long. I always think it is... Um, it's a unique opportunity, right? When we can bring in someone like Bliss, who's a member of our community, and although Bliss has spoken up a few times and she's always been a great contributor, it's been a blast to have you here live. So thank Thanks. you very much um, for being here. I appreciate that we had both over here on our chat and down here to my left, our Facebook Live. We appreciate the interaction because that really helps, right? These calls to me are always magic when you guys direct where we go because certainly we talked about what is it we're seeing here at, at Sales Mastery. What is it that maybe we can all that we can all chat about. And so I think that, you know, the whole goal for all of us going forward is, is to show up here, engage in conversation, engage within our Facebook page, 
And as always, we appreciate you taking time for being here. I know that a lot of you who are at Mastery are down in the event right now. So make sure you say hi to Bliss and I when you see us today or when you watch us later. Just know that uh, we missed you, but we appreciate you guys all being here. So uh, on behalf of Dave and the whole crew at Mortgage Coach and myself and the team at Win by Noon and Bliss Sawyer, thank you so much. Absolutely. Super fun. Thanks, guys. All right, people. We'll see you next week.